On this morning, the pride is heading for a woodland where there is more cover and more animals to hunt. Ha! I knew it! I knew you hadn't really changed. Okay, so I was faking being nice. It's not the worst thing I've ever done. Ooh, Steve, it's coming right at us. Grab it! I don't want to get in the way. It's a foul ball. What harm can it do? The butterfly effect. I'm sure we've all heard of this concept at some point. To put it simply, it's the idea that a small change can make much bigger changes happen. One small incident can have a big impact on the future. It's called the butterfly effect because something as little as a butterfly flapping its wings can cause a tornado elsewhere. Some famous examples include the bombing of Nagasaki, where the city of Nagasaki was chosen instead of Kuroko due to cloudy weather, and how stopping for a sandwich triggered the events of the two world wars. These are just two of the many famous examples of the butterfly effect. There is probably something that has happened in your life that can be attributed to a minuscule decision made by yourself or someone you don't even know. This means that sports must have tons of butterfly effect examples, and you would be right. The Steve Bartman incident is one of the most infamous moments in baseball history. It led to the demise of the 2003 Chicago Cubs. However, what if I were to tell you that this incident led to the 2016 Chicago Cubs winning the World Series? My name is Sportstorm. Check out my channel in the description. Let's get into the video. This story starts on October 14th, 2003. It's the eighth inning, one out, Juan Pierre on second base, and the Cubs are winning 3-0. Mark Pryor has pitched a gem up to this point. Luis Castillo is up to bat, and on a full count, he hits a foul ball down the left field line. Moises Alou tracks the ball to the stands where he attempts to catch it. However, a number of fans attempt to catch the ball, including this fan, Steve Bartman. Alou is unable to catch the ball, and well, the rest is history. The Marlins win the game after scoring 8 runs in the 8th inning. At this time, everyone blamed Bartman as the sole reason as to why the Cubs lost, even though shortstop Alex Gonzalez made a crucial error that kept the inning going, and manager Dusty Baker kept Mark Pryor in the game longer than he probably should have. In the next game, the Marlins beat the Cubs, and then they beat the Yankees in the World Series. The curse of the Billy Goat continued, and Steve Bartman was public enemy number one. At this point, Bartman was in fear for his well-being. However, it would eventually pay off 13 years later. It starts with the 2003 offseason. The Cubs made a few noteworthy moves, including the signing of Greg Maddox, a trade with the Marlins for Derek Lee, the signing of Todd Hollinsworth, who is part of the Game 6 fiasco with the Marlins, and a mid-season trade that saw the departure of Alex Gonzalez, who had the big error in Game 6 in exchange for Nomar Garcia Parra. Does the Bartman incident have a clear link to these moves being made? Yes and no. You can't say for certain whether the Cubs would have made these specific moves if they had won the World Series. Although it is plausible to say that the Game 6 implosion caused the front office to seriously reevaluate their team. The Cubs weren't exactly the best team in the league. They were the only division winners with under 90 wins, and while the team had three pitchers above six war, according to baseball reference, the hitter with the highest war was Sammy Sosa, with 2.7. You can pull up the OPS Plus stats of the team's best hitters, and while this makes their lineup look a little better, it is still not championship quality. Is it possible that these moves would have been made if the Bartman play never happened? Absolutely. I'm just saying that the Bartman play may have led to the front office making decisions they hadn't thought of previously. In 2004, the Cubs imploded late in the season as they lost a wildcard spot in the last week of the season. Fans will blame Latroy Hawkins as the culprit that started this late season implosion. Hawkins was also signed by the Cubs after the 2003 season. 
I'm only just bringing him up because it is very likely that he was brought in as a result of the Bartman fiasco. Let me explain. The best player for the Cubs in 2003 was Mark Pryor. From September into the postseason, manager Dusty Baker severely worked Pryor. Here is what Pryor's pitch counts were through his final nine starts of the season. These are pretty insane numbers. However, Pryor said he worked better further into games. He called it his second wind, a little boost that let him power through later innings. This seemed to work for him as he pitched at least six innings in 28 of his 30 regular season starts. However, he says he never got that second wind in game six. By the time the Bartman incident occurred, he had already thrown over 110 pitches. He was visibly frustrated after the incident, and as a result, he allowed three earned runs. How does this relate to the signing of Latroy Hawkins? Well, the bullpen was in a tough position that night. In fact, here's what Baker said after the game. My bullpen was tired. Remlinger's arm was barking like a dog. Alfonseca wasn't throwing the way he's capable. Guthrie wasn't throwing like he usually does. Vérez wasn't ready. And then there wasn't a spot to take Pryor out. It happened real quick. So the best arms in this bullpen were either exhausted, underperforming, or in the case of Joe Borowski, the closer. So that really left only one option, Kyle Farnsworth, which obviously didn't pan out well. As a result of the collapse in Game 6, the team needed bullpen help and they signed Latroy Hawkins. He became the closer after Borowski got injured. In September of 2004, the Cubs were 15-6 and six in that month before everything fell apart. Heading into September 25th, the Cubs were one and a half games ahead in the wildcard race. In a game against the Mets, Hawkins blew a save by giving up a game-tying three-run home run. In the end, the Mets won on a walk-off. The Cubs went 2-6 and six for the rest of the month, and they missed the playoffs. So like I said before, while it can't be proven that the Bartman play is a direct cause of certain transactions the Cubs made after the 2003 season, the Game 6 implosion made it apparent that the Cubs, at the very least, needed bullpen help, causing them to sign Latroy Hawkins, leading the team to miss the 2004 playoffs. The Cubs' implosion in 2004 put them under pressure to make significant moves. They traded Sammy Sosa to the Rangers and they did not re-sign Moises Alou. Two key members of that 2003 squad are now gone two years later. 2005 was even more disappointing than the previous year. Injuries to Nomar Garcia Parra, Mark Pryor, Kerry Wood, and Aramis Ramirez hindered their entire season. Heading into the offseason, the Cubs were under even more pressure to figure it out. They traded for another Marlin that was part of Game 6, Juan Pierre. They also signed Jock Jones. The 2006 season was a disaster, the worst season so far. They finished last in the division with a 66-96 record. Team president Andy McPhail resigned from his position and the team chose not to re-sign Dusty Baker. The team signed Lou Pinella as their new manager and the fans were as desperate as ever to see a winning team. The Cubs were aggressive in the free agent market. They signed Alfonso Soriano to an eight-year deal worth $146 million, the most expensive deal in franchise history up to that point. They also signed pitchers Ted Lilly and Jason Marquis to lucrative contracts. However, the signing that matters most to our story is utility man Mark DeRosa. DeRosa had a couple of solid seasons with the Cubs. Fortunately for the Cubs, they did go back to the playoffs during this time frame, but they lost in the NLDS two seasons in a row. During the 2008 offseason, the Cubs traded DeRosa to the Cleveland Indians in a deal that involved Chris Archer. Now obviously, Chris Archer never played for the Cubs, but he's involved in another deal a couple of years later. After a 75-87 and 87 campaign in 2010, the Cubs needed to make some drastic changes like they did years prior. Pinella retired and Mike Quaid was named the interim manager. The team decided to make a big deal for a starting pitcher. In this case, it was for Matt Garza. According to Baseball America, Chris Archer was the highest rated prospect among the players traded for Garza. So without Archer, this deal may have never happened. However, Archer is not the player in this trade we'll be focusing on. That player is Sam Fold. Fold was more of a fourth outfielder, but he plays a big role in this timeline. We need to fast forward to September 28th, 2011. Game 162. 
there are two games going on here, Rays vs Yankees and Red Sox vs Orioles. You may have seen my most recent video where these games also played major roles, the chicken and beer scandal. Check out that video if you want to know the full context, but the short version is that the Red Sox needed to win their game to get into the postseason after a huge implosion in September. If the Red Sox lose and the Rays win, then the Rays get into the playoffs. Bottom of the eighth, bases loaded, no outs. Sam Fold is at the plate. Fold walks and a runner comes in. A few batters later, Evan Longoria hits a three-run home run that cuts the lead down to one run. The next inning, Dan Johnson hits a game-tying home run. And then in the bottom of the 12th inning, Longoria hits a walk-off home run that sent the Rays to the playoffs. The Red Sox also lost on a walk-off to the Orioles, leaving them out of the playoffs. As the chicken and beer scandal continued, the GM of the Red Sox, Theo Epstein, left the team and joined the Chicago Cubs. And well, at this point, we know what eventually happens. Over the next five seasons, Epstein built a championship squad in Chicago, ending the curse in Wrigley. If Sam Fold was never traded to the Rays, then he doesn't pitch hit in the eighth inning of game 162, which means that Longoria would have never hit either of those home runs. The Red Sox did lose, but the Rays could have lost, which would have resulted in a tiebreaker. If the Red Sox won that tiebreaker, does Theo Epstein leave the Red Sox and join the Cubs? There are so many possible scenarios that stem from every little event. Without the Steve Bartman incident, it's very possible the Cubs would have never won in 2016. Sure, maybe they would have won earlier, like in 2003, but I'll take an absolute over a hypothetical any day. Before I end the video, there is actually another example of the butterfly effect regarding the Steve Bartman incident. It references the SEC's rise to dominance in college football. This was theorized around 2012. If you want every detail, feel free to look it up on Google. Otherwise, here's the short version of the timeline. Since the Marlins got to the World Series in 2003 instead of the Cubs, they needed to keep their infield dirt at Dolphin Stadium. This dirt caused the Miami Dolphins kicker to slip and miss two game-winning field goals, and they lost the game and missed the playoffs by one game. A bad offseason, precipitated by missing the playoffs again, resulted in a 1-8 start for Miami and their coach left mid-season and signed with Pitt a month or so later. This Pitt team beat West Virginia University in 2007 to take them out of the BCS title game and put LSU in, extending the SEC's title streak and recruiting advantage. If WVU had not lost, head coach Rich Rodriguez wouldn't have gone to Michigan, Les Miles would have, and the SEC would have probably been a lot different. So the next time you decide to reach for a foul ball, which could be a while since we can't go to stadiums, and the odds of you catching one are very slim, but just in case you are in that situation, remember when you reach for that foul ball, your decision can forever alter history, and then be talked about on a YouTube channel. So if you want to be YouTube famous, just go interfere with a player trying to catch a foul ball. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like if you did. If you know of any instances of the butterfly effect in sports you would like me to talk about, leave them down in the comments. Subscribe to Stark Raving Sports and subscribe to my channel, Sportstorm. Thanks for watching.